to those whose dream it is to fly. As Isaiah 60 says, who are these that fly as a cloud and as to the doves to their windows? Those who will ascend into the heavenlies, who will pass through the second heaven and overcome the snare of the fowler. It is Sunday, January 29th, 2023. You know, I'm going to release a book on this at some point. It's been in my heart, right? The Lord's <laughs> spoken it to me many times prophetically, but I'm not going to release it until it's going to change the nation. So we don't need another book unless it's really going to. You know, that's my perspective anyway. He's going to have to almost make me write it. It's in my heart, but when the time is right, I will release it. There's still just so much revelation coming to totally bring it to fullness. So I'm going to release out of Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The word place is not in the text. It literally says, he that dwelleth in the secret shall abide. More than a place, it is a dimension. It is a realm of knowing him because it's, it's multi-dimensional it's not a place but it's places for this is the secret of his face this psalm we don't know for sure who wrote it psalm 90 was the psalm of Moses psalm 92 was a psalm of David both Moses and David knew of this reality. They entered into it. But David speaks of this place, this dimension, in Psalm 31, verse 19, where he says, How great is your goodness which you have laid up for those that fear you, which you have wrought, for those that trust in you before the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret of your presence, the King James says. But that word translated presence is the Hebrew word panim and literally means face and should be thus translated here. You shall hide them in the secret of your face from the pride of man. And David, this secret of the face is made known through the key of David. So when, when the Lord said to David, and he, David speaks of this in Psalm 27, when you said unto me, seek ye your face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. And then David was anointed and there was a key that was released to him called the key of David. And it is the secret to his face. Because what goes before his face is how you <laughs> seek his face. So Psalm 89 verse 14 says, Mercy and truth shall go before your face. But before Yahweh's face. Before Jesus' face, you could say even. Mercy and truth shall go before Thy face. This is the secret of his face, a hiding place of his face. The knowing of him, the entering into union with him. He that dwelleth in the secret, 
this dimension in the tabernacle of David, whereby we abide in him and him in us. It's multidimensional. The tabernacle of David's multidimensional. It's not just one dimension where you can say it's a place. It's abiding in heaven and on earth. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret shall abide. Shall abide. Abide in me and I in you. That's this reality. He that dwelleth in the secret shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> the shadow. There's, you could just say, well, this is the shadow under his wings, but I believe there's two shadows spoken of here in Psalm 91. It speaks of the shadow of his wings, but also I believe this first, first one is the shadow of his hand. Spoken of in, in Isaiah 51, 16, you know, I released another message and my message cut short, and so I didn't end up actually finishing this part, but... Isaiah 51, 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth, the truth, and I've covered you with the shadow of my hand. That's the Father's left hand of mercy. That I may plant the heavens rooted in love and lay the foundation of the earth grounded in love and say unto Zion, thou art my people, that I may plant the heavens, that we may live in heaven and lay the foundation of the earth and live on earth so we may bring heaven to earth. It says in Romans chapter six that we were planted together into the likeness of his death, that we might be raised together. He that dwelleth in the secret shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow of his hand. Moses, when he said, show me your glory, Yahweh said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of Yahweh. And then Moses ascended up the mountain stood in the cleft of the rock. The Father covered Moses with his hand and the glory passed by. David speaks of this in Psalm 139. He laid his hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence or from your face? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. The height, the depth, the breadth, the length. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. He laid his hand upon me. When Jesus was anointed with Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended and rested upon him. He heard the voice from heaven. They heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What pleases the Father? <laughs> that we know his love. He is love. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is. Not that he exists, but that he is God. That he is love. That he is love. He's love. He can't, he can't in fullness release that love to us unless we're there in faith. Yes, Lord, I believe you are love. It's who you are. My beloved son and whom I am well pleased are those that can receive that love.
at all accepting love that would pass through them to all people to abide in heaven. Not only can receive that love, but then they release that love back and make a habitation for the Father, for Christ in them, the house that you build unto me. That's the beloved son whom I am well pleased. See, Jesus accomplished that when, when the Spirit rested upon him. He came into the full revelation of the seven spirits of God. The full revelation of the Father's love. Not only that, he knew the Father's love, but, but he made a house Where is the house that you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? The seven spirits of God, that revelation rested upon Christ. For he allowed that revelation to be written upon his heart. He was our forerunner. He was to teach us how to enter into union. To bring us back where we live from heaven and on earth. He not only knew the Father's love for him, but he also, right, was in this intimacy of relationship. Me and him, him and me. He that dwelleth in the secret, the secret of his face, where mercy and truth meet, the key of David. Me and him, him and me, shall abide under the shadow. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased who knows my love, who has made a habitation for the revelation of my love, that I can come and dwell in him and make him my footstool, bring heaven to earth through him. He that dwelleth in the secret of his face shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. So what's the refuge? His hands. His left hand is his hand of mercy. His right hand is his hand of truth. That's why in Isaiah 62 it says he swears by his right hand. That's why we swear by our right hand. It's our hand of truth. His left hand is his hand of mercy. God is my refuge and my fortress. His name is our fortress. It is our strong tower. Proverbs, is it 1821? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. What's this name of Yahweh? It's the name he proclaimed to Moses when he said, Show me your glory. An angel of his presence, an angel of his face, stood next to Moses and proclaimed this name. I am, I am God, compassionate, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in mercy and truth. There is the secret of his face in his name. The secret place, the secret of his face is in the tabernacle of David, in Yahweh's name <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord of Yahweh he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust David says in Psalm 57, my heart is fixed, my heart is fixed. I trust in your mercy. I trust in your truth. I am rooted and grounded in love. Listen to David, Psalm 57. He says, be gracious unto me, O God, be gracious unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. 
return unto thy rest, O my soul. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge. Actually, we'll go there a little bit later. Our refuge and our fortress are God, and him will we trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. What is this snare of the fowler? <laughs> if you're trying to ensnare a bird, that's probably an enemy, right? You're keeping them from flying. They were created to fly. We were created to fly. The snare of the fowler is the enemy keeping us, trying to keep us from ascending into the heavenlies, past the second heavens, into the third heavens. For if we get there, he has no place in us. He has no authority over us. We're over him. That's the man-child ascending and, and then into the third heavens. Revelation chapter 12, he knows it's done when that happens. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 12, when that woman of Revelation chapter 12 is ready to birth the man-child, the devil is there ready to devour because he knows this is it. If he doesn't take out the man-child, it's over. His rule on the earth is over. So his whole purpose and scheming is to keep the man-child from entering into the revelation, one, to snare him, the snare of the fowler to keep him from ascending. But once he's ascended, he's thinking, okay, I just, you know, as soon as he's birthed, I just got to devour him. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. But hey, this is, you know, he's doing his best, right? But he has ensnared us for a long time. But when we abide in the secret of his face, we're delivered from the snare of the fowler. He that dwelleth in the secret place, the secret of his face shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. By bringing forth the revelation to come out of that, to escape the snare, to live from the heavenlies. He ensnares us with lies. He ensnares us with, with thoughts and imaginations that limit us to think, oh no, I can't, you know. He's trying to keep us grounded on this earth. And the Lord's saying, come on up, come on up, come on up. Shake yourself of the dust, Isaiah 52. Shake thyself of the dust, arise and sit down. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. Okay, so now this is the throne of Christ. Isaiah 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on throne high and lifted up and above it stood the seraphim, the burning ones, each having six wings. Twain covered they their face and twain covered they their feet and twain did they fly. And they cried one to another saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. This is the throne of Christ under the seraphim's wings, under the cherubim's wings over the Ark of the Covenant. It's this covenant of love. You and me, me and you. The mercy seat, the testimony, the truth, this covenant, the two immutable things of the covenant, the two unchangeable things of the covenant. The 
oath, the promise, the truth, the mercy, the blood of the covenant, the surrendered life. That we would enter into union whereby we abide in heaven and on earth and we've escaped the snare of the fowler and the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Over the ark of the testimony in the tabernacle of David, you have overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony, the truth. The overcomers dwell here. They've escaped the snare of the fowler. They've ascended through the second heavens. And now as their head lifted up, high above their enemies round about them, David says in Psalm 27, he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. So back to Psalm 57. Be gracious unto me, O God, be gracious unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of your wings, the secret of his face, where the covenant is. This covenant to overcome, this covenant of marriage, of union. Yea, in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. That's the enemy, his reproach, his lies. He shall save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up, Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. The secret of his face, this fellowship of me and him, him and me. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. And listen to David. My soul is among lions. I lie among them. The sons of men whose teeth are as arrows. Or spears and arrow, their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, thy glory above all the earth. Listen to this. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me, whereof they are fallen themselves, say thou. My heart is fixed, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Be exalted, O God of the heavens, be exalted in all the earth, for your mercy is great towards us. For your mercy is great unto the heavens, and your truth unto the clouds. That is the secret of his face. David says, my heart is fixed, my heart is fixed. We see David say that in, I believe it's Psalm 25. It says, my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So David says, I am trusting in the mercy, the power of your blood to keep me here. I am trusting in the promise of your word, this covenant of mercy and truth. Me and you. You and me. Union. He that dwelleth in the secret shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. There it is. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. Fixed on his mercy. Fixed on his truth. Trusting. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Go through, go through the gates, Isaiah 26, 3. Now it says, Open ye the gates, Isaiah 26, 2. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the faith may enter in. It 
Send forth your mercy. He will keep us there as the apple of his eye. But we must engage it by faith. What do you say there in, in Psalm 57? Under the shadow of your wings will I make you refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God who performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Now we see this reproach when David's talking also about the secret place in Psalm 31. You shall hide them, verse 20, in the secret of your face from the pride of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. There's the reproach, the lie. What keeps us from the strife of tongues? The truth. What keeps us from the pride of man? This snare of the fowler, his mercy. It's in his mercy the knowing of this love that we can ascend there. The enemy has nothing against us. We're washed in the blood. We can pass through the second heavens. No lie, no reproach. We believe in his love. This is who he's pleased with, those who can receive his love and then release it back to him. Surely he should deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. There it is. There's the truth. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. No evil shall befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. There is not in the text. They shall bear thee up in the hands, in the hands of the Father. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. See, you're in the, you're in the third heaven now. The enemy's under your feet. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, see? See, it's the reciprocating. It's not only living from heaven, but we've made a house here where he dwells our love towards him. Because our love is to know him, not just to prostitute his presence and go live in the world, but we've set ourselves apart to be a habitation because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him from that snare from the pestilence because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him where on high the third heaven I will set him on high because he has known my name. Jesus said in John 17, 24, I have declared unto their, them your name and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Because they have known my name, this name, yeah, this name of love, my name of love, the same which I've he's magnified above all, this name. David speaks up in Psalm 138. For you've magnified your saying above all your name. This name that has mercy and truth in it. This name that he proclaimed to Moses in Exodus 34, 6. I am, I am God, compassionate, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in mercy and truth. The secret of his face, the tabernacle of David, is in his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The secret place is there.
because they have set their love upon me, therefore, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. When he calls upon me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. Actually, that deliver him and honor, that honor actually, if you look at it, actually means it's, it's a root of glory. I will deliver him and glorify him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's arise, saints. Escape the snare of the fowler. Shake yourself of the dust, Isaiah 52. Arise and sit down. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, and knowing the love of the Father. Abide in heaven and then reciprocate back that love to him that we may bring heaven to earth. Shalom, shalom.